This is the Tyler Morgan Show on Relentless Daring Media Network. Welcome back to Land of Urban and Bad Decisions. This is the Tyler Morgan Show live on twitch.com slash Tyler Morgan Show. Oddly enough, I don't know how that worked out. It was very, very prescient. Um, Oh my goodness, last couple of weeks I have been off. Uh, two weeks ago we had a family function. We're going to be gone late and just kind of, well, no sense trying to come home and rush into a podcast and not be ready for it. Then last week I came down with the crud, which... <laughs> <clears throat> I'm still kind of dealing with now, but after a day of fevers and chills and, oh, my gosh, last Saturday, I was like, you know, I can handle this. I can knock it out of the park tonight. Might be a little off my game, but, hey, I'm going to do this. About 9 o'clock last Saturday night, <laughs> I was gone out, like out of 5,000, no. So I apologize, got everyone all hyped up last week, and then I went and passed out. Damn sickness. But before I get into it, let me tell you about American Pride Roasters. You know what? It's November. It's still veterans. And you know what? I didn't line out another veteran for a coffee for this month, another veteran-inspired flavor. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you about my favorite roast from American Pride Roasters, and that would be the Thomas Paine Age of Reason Remix. Now, you, there is the Thomas Paine Blend, and it is amazing. It is good. It is great. However, if you, you're looking for a little something else, and you want to just abandon common sense, I recommend the Age of Reason Remix. This is 100% pure Robusta beans. Again, custom order. Do you want them dark, light? Whatever roast you want, you custom order it, custom grind it, or just get the whole beans and grind it yourself if that's what you're into, no judging. And check it out. It is so good. With the 100% Robusta, you don't get kind of the nuances of flavor that you get with the Arabica beans, but you get a whole hell of a lot more caffeine. You get nearly double the caffeine as the Arabica bean blend. So go ahead and check it out. And if that's what you're into, you want coffee that's going to kick you in the ass and start your day, I recommend, like I said, I recommend the Thomas Paine Age of Reason Remix. Go check it out at American Pride Roasters. Uh, When you get to the uh, order form and you fill it out, there'll be a little spot at the bottom. Check, mark that out, the shipping instructions. Tell them you heard about it from the Tyler Morgan Show. You won't save any money. There are no discounts associated with the Tyler Morgan Show. Just let them know that I told you about their great coffee. That's American Pride Roasters. APRCoffee.com. Historically great coffee. All right. So getting into all of the insanity that is going on in the world. Last couple weeks, obviously, mass shootings have taken over the news cycle. It, and I would be remiss if I did not talk about them. Obviously, the uh, the Club Q shooting in, I actually I don't remember where the Club Q shooting was, what city it was in, but it's an absolute horrible, horrible situation, and. My heart goes out to everyone who was there, the families of victims, those injured, uh, the staff, everyone who left to deal with everything. Colorado, thank you, Kim. Yeah, it was uh, Colorado Springs outside of Fort Carson. Um, This is a situation where possibly red flag laws would have actually done something. And the way I say, and the reason I say that is, I'm sure leading up to this, there has not been a whole lot come out because I think there's been a lot of narratives fall apart that the media is really wanting to push. But it, it's hard to push narratives when the facts aren't even there to even kind of hint at it. Um, 
Fact of the matter is, a crazy person, I'm not going to say his name, I'm going to talk about the other shooting at Walmart, and I'm not going to say his name either, but again, that's a matter of narratives falling apart. And as news came out about this person's sexual identity as being non-binary, as I neither identify as a man or a woman, I am non-binary. It's like, huh. That's so odd. And this fat piece of crap, that's all I'm going to refer to him as because he is indeed a fat piece of crap. Uh, the heroism that came out of that, um, y- you compare this to Uvalde, the school down in Texas, where you had 20 armed police officers with their own assault rifles, handguns, body armor, helmets, riot shields, stood out in the hallway for a freaking hour while children and teachers are literally being slaughtered. You you see them in the hallway, you hear the audio, you hear the gunshots going off, and these guys are doing nothing. But keep in mind, one son of a bitch had the presence of mind to use the hand sanitizer to make sure that his hands were clean. Not of the bloodshed, but at least of any, you know, germs that might be in the school. Like I said, we you have that situation. You go to Club Q in in Colorado where you have a veteran, a guy who's there with his gay son and his uh, gay son's boyfriend, if I'm not mistaken from listening to the interview from the from this guy, his son's boyfriend got killed. I don't know for sure on that. I'm Don't quote me. I just based off the audio of, of the interview, that's what it sounds like. This guy has the presence of mind. He recognizes the type of body armor that fat piece of crap is wearing to have the grab handle at the back. This grab handle is so someone falls in combat, you know, you need to pull them out of the way, you need to drag their body, whatever. It's got the handle. This dude rushes the shooter, grabs that handle, and yanks him down on his ass. Dude drops his AR. And so I'm presuming a drag queen, somebody that he identified as wearing you know, platform healed or platform sold shoes. Comes up and like, hey, kick the gun away, kick the gun away. And at this point, this guy is already secured, already secured the shooter's sidearm and is beating him in the head with it. And he's thinking, oh my God. I, as he's beating him, I need to stop so I don't kill him. I don't want this death on my conscience. Um, I'm sorry if it was me. I probably would be beating him till he was dead. That's just me. Perhaps this veteran. Perhaps this guy who's just trying to have a good time and bond with his son. And his son's boyfriend. I think he's a better man than me. I think he is. And, yeah, and then, you know, person of unknown identity with the platform shoes curb stomps this fat piece of crap's ass. If you saw the mugshot photos of this dude, oh my God, black and blue and cut up. He deserved all of it and so much more. And and here's the thing about people look at conservatives like me or you or the if you're a liberal and watching this, I hit my mic boom there. Sorry for any background noise. Um Yeah, liberals who are watching this trying to go, yeah, this guy he's probably celebrating and try to kill off the kill off the gays. No, we're not. 
it, it wouldn't matter if it was a left wing commie convention. If these commies are peacefully hanging out in some a hole, whether it's a crazy right winger trying to rid the world of commies, or it's just a crazy person, which I'm betting this is what the uh, nightclub shooter was, um, comes and he starts trying to kill people who are, for whatever reason, conservatives will be the first will be among the first to say, oh my God, this is horrible. Do these people need help? Is there something we can do? Have have we, what's with the shooters? The shooter dead or alive? In this case, the shooter was caught alive. Now, I'm sure some people will say, oh, it's because he was white. You never see, you never see black shooters get killed. You never see them get taken alive. Well, don't forget the guy who just went to prison for driving a car through a Christmas parade last year was taken alive. And he was black. Just saying. Your narratives don't always work out in your favor. But this crazy asshole does this. And and, and I know that... um, yeah, my language is a little coarser on this one than normally, but whatever, I don't care. Um, the fact that they took the guy out, and again, patrons, unarmed patrons, took this cat out, makes the worthless pieces of crap in Uvalde, well... Makes them look like the worthless pieces of crap in the world. Uh, Kim is saying in the chat room that uh, those cops should be uh, hung by their necks. I think that's a little good for them myself. I say hang them by their ankles until their heads pop from all the blood rushing to it. But that's just me. They... They deserve equal justice for the deaths that they allowed to happen. Not children who died before they got there, but children who died while they were there. You have cops. We're we're told, back the blue, back the blue, back the blue. If you're not conservative, if you don't back the blue. Well, you know what? It is really Freaking hard to back the blue when you have the FBI. The FBI is the epitome of blue. They're the they're America's national police force. We, they say we don't have one because blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we do. It's called the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They're the ones who investigate and make the arrests of federal laws. And you have these guys who are willingly going along with, you know, SWAT-style arrest of peaceful protesters for, what, allegedly breaking the FACE Act? People exercising their First Amendment right to protest against what they feel is an abomination, abortion clinics? These guys just... Go along because many of them is like, I'm just here to do a job, and then my job is arrest 70 year old granny for whatever reason. I'm going to go arrest 70 year old granny. I'll stick a gun in her face. Maybe I'll even shoot her dog if her dog comes at me. This is an absolute travesty. I, I will no longer rock a. Back the blue sticker. I will never say back the blue. Because we see it over and over again. All of this crap happens. Where you have, you know, federal officers, again, making these very violent arrests of nonviolent people. You have uh, police. They they show up at a mass shooting. It's their job to end it. But they stand in the hallway. 
uh, Parkland, you had the sheriff's deputy who hid behind a pillar outside while the shooting was going on. How, how do we back that blue? How do we back the blue when there are good guys on these police forces who are willing to do the right thing? But they have pieces of crap who serve alongside them, who ruin their good names. How? It's it's very difficult to stand up for police when you know you have guys who well, I'm a good officer, but I, I I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say anything about X, Y, and Z going on because it's going to cost me my job. Um, I'm sorry. If you're not willing to stand up against corruption, you're not willing to stand up against criminal activity within your ranks, you are no better than that officer who is engaging in corruption, who is engaging in criminal activity. You don't deserve my backing, Mr. I don't want to get involved police officer. Maybe, maybe our police officers forgot what the hell having a backbone means. Perhaps the men in our police forces around the country need to reach down in their pants and see what they have there. If they have a set of balls, give them a squeeze and realize, hey, these are real. These actually do something. These actually mean something. Stand up. You are equipped with a backbone, not so that you would not be a flopping pile of jelly on the ground. Reach down, find your balls, give them a squeeze, and rise up up stand up let your spine carry you with height and you know what if you blow the whistle on corruption and criminal activity in your organizations guess what if you lose your job you know what sometimes taking a loss is worth the freaking sacrifice um what a couple weekends ago when i was in dallas for uh, the taping of that Glenn Beck special. Uh, FBI agent Stephen Friend. Here's a guy who said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do these SWAT-style arrests. If, if you want me to go talk to these people, if you want me to go interview them, whatever, I will do it, but I'm not going to do it as a SWAT team. I've got all these arrests as an officer. Never once did we have to do a, you know, door-kicking style arrest. He got put on a permanent suspension, turned in his badge and gun, and honestly, I think he's uh, facing reprisal for being a whistleblower. Which, if you don't know, that's illegal. I think this is a criminal reprisal against him for, you know, being a man and standing up for what is right. And instead of just doing his job and going home, he's actually doing the job. He is looking at that oath to support, uphold, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and he takes it seriously. He lives by it. He breathes it. It's, you know, he's a man. If you have not seen that special, uh, it's on YouTube. Check it out. Um, Targets of Tyranny by uh, Glenn Beck. Great episode which I was on, by the way. If you are a subscriber to The Blaze, you can go check it out towards the end of the episode. <clears throat> they have a Q&A session with the audience, and I was one of the audience members who got to ask a question, specifically about concerning um, 
these guys who are wanting to be whistleblowers in the FBI, who are trying to protect us from the DOJ. And what what happens when, you know, they're trying to blow the whistle, but the OIGs are the ones who decide, hey, are you or are you not a whistleblower? But anyways, I know I went really long. I went like almost 15 minutes just on what happened in Colorado and comparing to Uvalde, but I got to hit up, got to hit up Virginia because you want to talk about a story of a narrative completely falling apart. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Still coming off the crud. I apologize. So again, also earlier this week at a Walmart in West Virginia, now, as the story was coming out and starting to come together and coalesce, they were already witnessing, uh, it looked like the shooter was targeting certain people. Really? Huh. Interesting. Well, then, um, as of updates today, Virginia Walmart gunman left a death note saying he felt harassed by co-workers. Oh, boy. Uh, officials in Chesapeake, Virginia, confirmed in a statement the Walmart supervisor who fatally shot six co-workers inside the store on Tuesday left a note in his phone in which he described being harassed. Sorry, everyone, but I did not plan to pro- plan this. I promise things just fell in place like I was led by the Satan. Shooter, who shall be unnamed, wrote in a letter titled Death Note that was stored on his phone. My only wish would have been to start over from scratch and that my parents would have paid closer attention to my social deficits. Ah, yes, blaming parents for your suck. Gotta love the logic of these dummies. Police also confirmed on Friday that shooter used a 9mm handgun. Ah, no, the shooter had a long gun. No, he had a handgun. But remember, according to Joe Biden, a 9mm bullet... We'll just blow your lungs straight out your back or something. This is weird. I've seen people shot with 30 caliber bullets from an AK-47 that did not have lungs hanging out their back. They didn't have giant craters in them from being shot with an AK-47 with a 7.62 by 39 round. But what do I know? I'm just a big dummy. What do I, I, I am not a, I am not a left wing gun expert who can tell you these things like our esteemed president, Joe Biden, a box of ammunition and a receipt for the gun were discovered during a police search of his home. Oh, and by the way, he bought that gun, uh, Tuesday morning. This is a guy where if there was a, call for a red flag law, maybe they could have flagged him in Nick's that temporarily he couldn't buy anything if there was a reason that he should have had a red flag thrown on him. But, again, I'm not saying that he did anything of the right. I'm not advocating for red flag laws. I think red flag laws are dumb. To quote Donald Trump, take the guns, then due process, end quote, is horrible legal policy. The note, which authorities redacted in several places to protect the names of specific people, described how Shooter lost his dignity when he believed his phone was hacked. Mm Mm-hmm. I was harassed by idiots with low intelligence and a lack of wisdom. The associates gave me evil twists, grins, mocked me, and celebrated my downfall the last day. Right. And then there's a photo which, oh, yeah, if you're expecting that the uh, shooter was a typical right-wing, white supremacist-type person, yeah, the shooter was definitely, well, I don't know his political origins, but he's definitely not white. He's very, very dark. So the whole idea that, oh, there's a crazy white guy with his gods, that kind of goes out the window, Also, as as does the story, the narrative of, Oh, he had an assault rifle. No, that didn't get, that didn't play play much either. 
Wank was found dead inside the break room, break room from what police say was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police said so he had no criminal history and was dressed in civilian clothing without body armor. So again, not a well-planned out, I would go crazy like some of these other shooters have been in the last, these last few attacks that have been highly publicized. In a statement, Walmart said, shooter unnamed, had been employed with the company since 2010. His position at the time of the shooting was overnight team lead. Tuesday night's violence was the nation's second high-profile mass shooting in four days and the second high-profile supermarket shooting this year. Police have identified the victims as Brian Pendleton, 38, Kelly Pyle, 52, Lorenzo Gamble, 43, Randy Blevins, 70, Fernando Chavez Barron, 16, all from Chesapeake. Uh, Tynika Johnson, 22, of nearby Portsmouth, was also among the dead. A Walmart spokesperson, spokesperson confirmed an email that all the victims worked for the company. Another four people were hospitalized in the shooting, which happened just after 10 p.m. Uh, police say there were about 50 people in the store at the time. Many were stocking up ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. See, now maybe there is something to this. I, and I'm not saying that his actions were at all justified. One million percent not saying that. However, if he was a, even as a supervisor, if he was a victim of harassment and that, you know, the corporate or even the store management was not doing anything to address it, I mean, that's a failure on them. I mean, the fact that they could allow their team to become so entangled and engrossed in harassing a you know a fellow employee to where this happened where he just like you know what ah, today's the day going to do it I mean that's ridiculous where where is the humanity in these people now I'm not uh Kim is asking is he a soy boy I mean maybe I I really don't know for sure but obviously, it, you know, talking about social deficits, is this a person who was, you know, on the spectrum and, you know, knew they were on the spectrum but had really bad issue dealing, like interpersonal skills that weren't properly developed? I, I don't know. And this is a shooting that is pure tragedy. Because there are so many things that could have been done ahead of time to prevent it. That does not involve taking guns. Much of it has to do with work culture. I mean, ain't the majority of these workplace shootings like this, uh, people become disgruntled for a reason. Uh, when going postal became a thing, uh, Again, this that was a result of an employee who felt put upon by management, by coworkers, and union and the postal union wouldn't do anything about it because you know, ah, why well, we can't rock the boat, blah blah blah, and he felt he had no choice. Again, that's not trying to downplay anything he did because obviously going in and you know shooting co-workers and in this case and this was really strange situations where you really do have to look at a lot of the circumstances because you know what happened in um what happened in Colorado and Parkland, what happened in uh, Buffalo at that shooting. And and many of these, they're literally just, there's fish in a barrel, start pulling the trigger. That is, uh, that's one thing. Where this guy spe- targeted specific people. 
So, I mean, it wasn't just a, uh, you know, I'm going to go kill as many people as I can. Like, these are the people who deserve to die. And, again, because management would not deal with it, apparently. Now, I, I don't, I don't want to make any claims that Walmart... at the corporate level or even at the store level was not trying because I don't know those facts. But if this guy was being, was being so harassed, but the store or corporate was not doing anything, again, this is blood on their hands in a sense because this is a situation that could have been avoided through proper, you know, intervention techniques that would have, that would, that could have resolved the situation years before. I mean, you, you don't work at a store for 12 years if you don't like the job. I mean, obviously he did. He was there for 12 years. So I don't know. I'm going to take a quick break, and I will be right back. I want to talk to you about Keto Chow. Keto Chow is a small company out of Utah that uses the absolute best ingredients to make the absolute best weight loss products available on the market. Their first goal is flavor. Who wants to drink something as a meal replacer that tastes like crap? Keto Chow understands that this is a hard barrier for a lot of companies to break through, so they have some of the best flavors. Cookies and cream, chocolate, vanilla, real strawberry. These are the best shakes I've ever had. I've been using them for a few months now, and they are amazing. So go to the link in the show notes, check it out. You can search for recipes on how you can use their Keto Chow products to make amazing foods that taste amazing and help with your weight loss goals. KetoChow.xyz, keto made easy. Drizzly is the leading home alcohol delivery service available. Imagine being able to sit at home and pull up your smartphone and browse your favorite wine, beer, spirits, and then have it delivered to your home in as little as one hour. Go to drizzly.com or check out the link in the show notes and start shopping today. Not available in all areas. Please drink responsibly. Drizzly.com. All right, so getting back into it based off of the last couple stories, I think what possibly has to be the worst of all of it is that, again, anytime this happens, it's never the crazy person in Colorado with the gun. It's never the guy with zero criminal history going out and buying a gun before going on a shooting spree and then turning the said gun on himself. It's never their fault. It's always the guns. It's always the accessibility and the availability of guns. And the crazy people who would love no more, would love nothing more than to take our guns from us because, well, we just can't trust them because look what happens our, our gun crime is it's just so high. Oh, my God. Yep. Like crazy mayor carpfish in uh, Chicago talking about Colorado. This, this is BS. Um, hey, mayor carpface, how many shootings did you have in your city over the weekend because of failures to actually, I don't know, enforce the gun laws that we already have on the books. 
where you have, you allow gangbangers to plead down if they're carrying drugs that they're probably selling to because, you know, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to incarcerate so many black people because the rate of, rates of incarceration are so inequitable. Which, you know, I think tonight I'm going to do a, uh, I think I'll do an extra shot on the death penalty because it's a very uh, touchy subject. And I've been re- doing a lot, listening to a lot of audio books that have really touched on the subject. And, yeah, I, I would like to take that opportunity on Patreon to do an episode where I lay out my feelings on it. So I, I think I might do that tonight. So watch it on Patreon.com if you're a subscriber over there. Uh, me talking about death penalty stuff. So back to, now I've got that little sidebar out of the way. I think one of the worst hits on it, though, what came from Joe Biden. On Thanksgiving Day, um, he was in Nantucket walking out of a fire department when he was caught. Do, 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 do. He, he was uh, caught by reporters outside. Can you comment on the Walmart shooting, Mr. President? I actually have the transcripts of this little Q&A session, so... This is going to be verbatim of the reporters, doesn't say who, and of the president. I'm sick and tired of these shootings. We we should have much stricter gun laws. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. The president moves closer to the press. (laughs) Your hair smells delicious. Um... Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Mr. President. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all. Look, the idea we're not enforcing red flag laws, period. Just based on knowledge, not on parents saying or a loved one say you should arrest this person for his own sake is is ridiculous. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, we got one of the first red flag laws in the state of Delaware, and my sub Bo is the one to, was the one enforcing it. It made a lot of difference. It saves lives. That's number one. Number two, the the idea the the idea we still allow semi automatic weapons to be purchased is sick. It's just sick. It has no no social redeeming value. Zero. None. Not a single solitary rationale for it except profit for gun manufacturers. <coughs> Trying to make fun of Biden is just killing my voice, so <coughs> Oh, pardon me. Mm. Can you do anything about gun laws during the lame duck, sir? <laughs> I'm going to try. Well, what will you try and do? I'm going to try and get rid of assault weapons. A- again, assault weapons, when one of the, when the shooting he's specifically being asked about took place using a freaking pistol. (laughs) Kim says Keith Richards and Ozzy are more coherent than our president. And Ozzy is a drug addled, uh, drug addled octogenarian with Parkinson's who can hardly, who could hardly talk even before the Parkinson's diagnosis. Um, Absolute insanity, though, that, again, it, it, these guys, they, they don't care. Semi-automatic weapons. There are hunting rifles that are semi-automatic. I had a squirrel gun, 20, a Ruger 1022. Semi-automatic. Yeah, they the bullets. You know, you have people go deer hunting with M1 Garands, guns, these are rifles that won World War II, for God's sake. I apologize for using the Lord's name in vain. <coughs> rifles that won World War II. Beautiful 
You shoot eight rounds, then ping. These They want to ban those because, oh, they're just too dangerous. AR-15s, Mini-14s. Uh, Springfield M1A rifles, my Beretta, my uh, High Point, Colt 1911s, Springfield SDMs, Rugers, all Tauruses, all of these brands that are sold by the millions because p- people like them. Sig Sauer, the uh, I, I don't remember the actual uh, designation, but the military has it as the M17, the M18 pistols. <laughs> we're, they're good enough for our servicemen to carry into combat, but we're not allowed to have them for target shooting, for home defense, for personal defense. Because they're, they're not... Uh, they're not a revolver. They're not a single shot Derringer. There's a reason why our founders guaranteed having a having a right that the people can keep and bear arms. That it is to not be infringed, because they don't. They could foresee the government in the future trying to oppress their own people. And why do they know that? Because they just went through a war where it started off with the government trying to seize the guns. That's what kicked everything off. Before the, before the declaration of independence was signed, uh, by almost, what's he? April, May, May, June, July. By almost three months, almost four months, maybe. The British marched on Lexington in Concord in 1776. Because in Boston, you know, they're having this place called Bunker Hill that was getting really kind of hairy. So the British went and say, hey, there's an armory in these towns. We need to go get them. We need to go get those guns. We need to get that powder. We need to get the get the ball. So they went. And now when our own government's doing the same thing again, the right to keep bare arm is not all encompassing. Uh yeah. Heller kind of said so. And as well as other court cases. So I don't know what they think they're doing. But it ain't pretty. All right, got two more stories I'm going to try to cram in here before we go. But first of all, I got to talk about Twitter because, hey, you know what? If you follow me on Twitter at fake Tyler Morgan, guess what? You'll see that I have... A blue check. Yes, I'm paying for it. I know, I know. There's people on Twitter who love to remind me, oh, you bought your blue check. It's like, oh, you're still stupid, regardless of what you think about me paying for my blue check. But as we all noticed, prior to Elon buying the uh, buying the service, um, those whole... Terms and conditions, terms of use, end user agreements, they weren't really enforced equally. To the point where you can literally have someone saying you should commit violence on this person, but because they're a lefty saying it about a right wing person, it's all fine, hunky dory. I hope somebody. More specifically, um, <coughs> uh, God damn it, guy from the Capitol. Uh, his name evade. His name is eluding me at this point. 
were one of the guys suspected of being a plant for the government inside the ca- you know the Capitol riots on Jan 6. I said, I hope he stubs his toe on Twitter. I caught a one-week ban on Twitter for saying, I hope this guy stubs his toe. Well, now that uh, Elon has been charged, uh, this is an article. I'm not going to be able to read all of it. It's a huge article from Ian Miles Chong. He's kind of a bomb thrower, I'm not going to lie. And I don't always agree with everything he says, but this is a great article. Um, between him and Andy No, they've been there's been a spree of people calling out uh, Twitter users who have a history of calling for violence, anti-Semitism, and all of this garbage, and they've never been blocked. They think they've been re- probably been reported numerous times. But Twitter's like, oh, well, you know, people say things, and it's fine. You're, and they gaslight you. It's like, oh, he didn't mean that. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, Ian Miles Chong in the tweet said, there is a terrorist group actively promoting and celebrating violence against Jews. The account has been active since 2021. I hope more can be done to crack down on this. And he's got, you know, the screenshots of the tweets and some of the stuff they Ray Epps, thank you, Kim. My brain is not working very well tonight, and I apologize. Um, but yeah, Ian Miles Chong point out he he makes this tweet, and Elon Musk responds, "Agreed, that's not okay." In a separate thread, Musk called for members to the called for members of the public to report violations of sites terms of service against child sexual exploitation and far left extreme violence. Well, numerous self-identified Antifa militants, including several prominent organizers, organizers have been banned for calling for violence against Chaya Raychik, who operates Libs of TikTok, and Daily Wire host Matt Walsh. And it just keeps going on. You know, uh, again, screenshots of Andy Noe and Elon. Uh, Elon Musk saying incitement to violence will result in account suspension. <sighs> no detailed how, following his reporting on members of the loosely knit far left militant organization, he was chased. He was chased down, beaten up, forced him to seek refuge at a Portland hotel in 2021. Antifa used Twitter to direct comrades to swarm me after I ran to a hotel following a violent street beating. Elon Musk responded. That is a disturbing story and very concerning that Twitter took no action despite queer violation of TOS. Report in this thread for now. Prompting numerous users to provide him with queer examples of militants in violation of the site's rules against threats of intimidation. And it just goes on. And it got to the point where many people, so many people were getting mad that, um... There, hours after the bans, Antifa militants took the social media platform to organize arson attacks on Tesla locations around the United States, posting the addresses of Tesla service centers and dealerships. As revenge for Elon Musk suspending violent extremist accounts on Twitter, Antifa and Portland are organizing arson attacks on Tesla locations tonight. Report no. Yeah, so now they're, they're literally going after Elon Musk because... <laughs> He actually has more balls than the Uvalde cops. It's like, seriously. Thank you, Elon. If I never get my real Tyler Morgan Twitter account back, I never get it back. Whatever. Don't care. It's just a Twitter account. So, like I said, if I get back... I, do if not whatever but it, it's just great because he has been reinstating accounts that were suspended even though their uh the claims of violating the tos were greatly exaggerated but now here is the part of the episode 
where YouTube will probably get mad because I'm going to read a report that they might not agree with because of the Rainbow Jihad and its influence over the YouTubes. And in fact, this might get me and might catch some warnings from some of my uh, podcast carriers. So, you know, Spotify has a few episodes of mine that, because I talked about the vax and COVID and this, that, and the other, they got the little, uh, then here's where you go for rule, for more, for accurate information on COVID. I got the little warning. It's awesome. It made me feel like a real boy at that point. All right, so headline, growing body of evidence shows social influence is causing teens to undergo sex change. Ah, the number of, and this is from Laurel Duggan, Dugan, I don't know, Daily Caller News Foundation, published yesterday, November 25th. The number of young people identifying as transgender has soared in recent years, and females have come to make up the vast majority of patients seeking gender transitions Reversing a long-standing trend. Interesting. This number is number of people can call. Some view this rapid demographic shift as evidence that peer influence is driving young people, females in particular, to transition. Adolescents are very susceptible to peer influence, so to suggest there can be no influence on young people is preposterous and flies in the face of everything we know about teenagers, Dr. Erica Anderson, a psychologist who works with transgender children, told the Daily Caller News Foundation. The recent surge in transgender identification is caused in part by peer influence, a growing body of evidence suggests, and some transgender advocates are acknowledging this issue. Uh, It's like the uh, gay men's choir said, we are coming for your children. Many activists argue that transgenderism has become more prevalent because because growing social acceptance allows more transgender people who would otherwise keep their gender identity a secret and to live openly. Critics of youth gender youth gender transitions, however, argue that the growing rate of transgender identification in adolescents, along with rapidly changing demographics of transgender people, are evidence that peer influence is driving young people to identify as transgender who otherwise wouldn't. Gender dysphoria, a deep sense of discomfort with one's biological sex, which may drive a person to become transgender, used to be observed primarily in males, according to Reuters. That trend has been fully reversed over the past 15 years. Among adolescents seeking transgender medical interventions, biological females outnumber biological males by a factor of 2.5 to (coughs) 7.1. This drastic change in transgender population was driven by peer influence. Some medical professionals argue. Dr. Erica Anderson, a psychologist who works with transgender children, told Daily Caller News Foundation that peer influence, particularly through social media. Looking at you, TikTok, you bunch of commie Chinese bastards. As a result of teen social isolation, is at least partially to blame for soaring race or gender identity issues among adolescent girls. I think the people who are on the far right who say it's all social influence are wrong. But people on the far left who say there can be no social influence are also wrong. Anderson, a psychologist who works with children, told, uh, they, they love to keep throwing that line back in there. Adolescents are very susceptible to peer influence. So to suggest there can be no influence on young people is preposterous and flies in the face of everything we know about teenagers. A study published in the scientific journal Plus One, <coughs> it's P-L-O-S-1, obs- Surveyed 256 patients whose children experienced rapid onset of gender dysphoria. The vast majority, 86.7% of adolescents either started spending more time online or were in a friend group with at least one other transgender person prior to identifying as transgender, according to the study. But, yeah, it's just... <coughs> Yeah, I got so caught up in other stuff. I mean, that is just ridiculous, though, that 
you're starting to actually see people who work in that field finally coming out and admitting what some of us have been saying for a long time. Pointing out the obvious, you know, trend that is, you know, now it said in here, the, uh, you know, Dr. Anderson, the, oh, it's not all social media. Inf- okay. Again, I, I will say I agree with this. That's not all social media influence. However, the fact that it is a social contagion, 86% of transgender girls either spend more time online or in a peer group with a transgender uh, acquaintance. If you're telling me that the influence, and there's been all kinds of anecdotal evidence to support this, um, you know, a small school that went from 1% of the class of a class being transgender to 25 to 50% being, being all transgender. That's not normal. That is very, very unnormal. This is a, something that you really don't see in, you know, statistics that, you know, are being played out naturally. <clears throat> so, I mean, I think we really have to step back and look. Are children being groomed? Whether it's by adults, whether it's just from hanging out with other transgender people and then being made to feel like they have to conform to this. We've all been teenagers. We know what the the pressures to the the pressures to you know fit in with society because you're going to be othered. We've all been there. You know whether it's using alcohol, drugs, smoking, or and apparently, are you are you a dude who wants to be a chick? No, well, you're now on the, you're now another. Are you a chick who wants to be a dude? You're not. Huh, I guess we can't hang out with you anymore. (coughs) Again, now I'm not saying all of this is being done with with malevolence. I think there is some of it that is definitely malevolent. And some, some level of social control population control because hey guess what if you get a bunch of kids to start getting uh, cross hormone therapy that and puberty blockers that will render them permanently sterile oh it can be reversed no no there's no science that ever suggest, said that it could be uh, it could be reversed that's the reason why they're called puberty blockers not puberty laters, puberty blockers. So I mean, this is something I think we really should be looking harder at, not because, no, we're transphobic, but because, you know, we have to protect our kids, period, end of story. <laughs> I think any doctor who looks at a child and says, oh, well, you're transgender, and to meet, and that's the first thing they do is recommend, you know, medications to block puberty or to, you know, you know, you know, cross hormone therapy. I think they should lose their license because I think that many of these kids have a lot of other issues. Uh, there was a thirty year study that showed that, you know. Over time, they, these this age group is twenty percent more, or not twenty percent, twenty times more likely to commit suicide. And these are people who they need need mental health support. I'm not saying a doctor will talk them out of being transgender at all. 
However, there are many other underlying issues where if I do this, I will be accepted. If I do this, these feelings will go away. Perhaps there's other things going on and deciding to, you know, allow a doctor to castrate you or give you a double mastectomy at the age of 15 is not going to solve those issues. All right, that's going to wrap up the show for this week. Again, thank you so very much for tuning in. Those of you who were here in the live chat, hanging out with me, watching the live stream, thank you so very much. Or if you're not here and you're checking me out on YouTube, thank you so very much. If you're on YouTube checking this out for the first time, remember, hit the subscribe button, and then you see that little bell, hit that little bell too. That way you get notified whenever a new episode of the Tyler Morgan Show is posted for you to watch. Um, again, thank you so very much for listening to this on podcast. I remember I ask you to do the same four things every week. Number one, please hit the subscribe button, just like on YouTube. That way, hey, every week when the podcast publishes, hey, boom, bang, it's right there. You get notified. It's in your phone. You can download list to it later. Whatever. <coughs> After that, please rate the show. Look for five stars. I'll accept four, three or less. We need to talk it. If you have a question about my funky hand here, not wanting to bend right, um, I broke it, so it still don't work right. Half time, as you can see right there, my finger don't even don't even, don't even cross right. Um, again, once you rate it five stars, I want five, except four, three and less. We need to talk. Hit me up on Twitter, DM me at you know DM me at fake Tyler Morgan. Um, glad to. Glad to have it out with you. It'll be fun. After, once you've rated, subscribed, rated, reviewed, please share this episode. Send it to someone who's saying, hey, I think you're going to like what this guy has to say. Or, hey, I think you're going to like what this guy has to say. Send it to him. Then you snicker as you walk off because they're going to hate every word of it. Don't worry. I'm in on the, I'm in on the joke. Trust me. I 100% endorse this behavior. Again, thank you so very much for listening. Uh, If you care to support the show, remember ko-fi.com slash Tyler Morgan Show. Check it out. Buy me a cup of coffee. It'll be great. Um, Yes, awesome. Sign up on Patreon, patreon.com slash Tyler Morgan Show. It's awesome. It's, you can, you know, get early access to interviews, uh, you know, ad-free listening. You know, minus the, minus the coffee. I, I have to talk. You will hear about the coffee regardless because, you know, I love the coffee and you need to hear about it. So, again, thank you so very much, as always, for listening. Dear Lord, I cannot speak. To- thank you very much for listening. And, as always, stay relentless. Tyler Morgan Show is a relentless daring media production. The Tyler Morgan Show is supported.